Welcome back, everybody, to the Calabria Podcast, your one-stop shop for all things supernatural. I'm your host, Jose. And I'm your host, Samantha. And that's right, everybody. We are back with a brand new episode, and actually, this is going to be our Halloween episode. So, happy Halloween to everybody. Happy Halloween, guys. Yeah, we just hope everybody has a great time today. If you're going to go out to any Halloween parties or anything like that or anything planned for the weekend, just make sure that you guys are safe out there. You guys already know we kind of give this talk all the time, but it's, you know, it's never too much. Everybody just got to be safe. So the time is finally here. You know, we wait all year long for this, and this is really like our prime time. You know, this is where we would imagine most people will probably be looking for these sorts of scary stories and just spooky things in general. So we're here to serve the people. And I'm excited, Samantha. What about you? I'm very excited. I know we have a very important announcement to make, and we've been very excited. It's been in the works for, I want to say, kind of like two months now. And yeah, do you want to introduce it? So we are actually featured in a podcast that I really enjoy. And Samantha, I know it was one of those that I shared with her early on before we even started this podcast. Um, It's one of my favorite paranormal podcasts. And I'm so happy to say that we are actually going to be featured on it for their Halloween episode. So at the same time that this episode is coming out, you all should be able to listen to it. And that is on the Geist podcast. So if you guys look in our episode description, you will be able to find them linked below. Be sure to check them out. They are a very, very, very good podcast. I highly recommend it to everybody. And Samantha, do you want to talk about what it was like? It was a huge honor to be on their podcast. It was a very fun experience just to be able to share our stories. Like usually we do share it just with each other. And like we have told some of the, I want to say most of these stories on our podcast but they were separated into like many different episodes so in their episode that they will be posting you'll be able to see them all together and it was very fun what about you yeah no i definitely agree it was very nice and like samantha said it was an honor to kind of just share our stories with them and be able to put that out to a bigger platform bigger audience of people and you know have them hear what we've experienced and like Samantha said we've shared them in the past here but it's gonna be I promise you you might enjoy that better listening on their half because ours was kind of like all over the place different episodes and all that so it'd be nice to hear them all compiled together in sort of like one continuous format so be sure to check that out and again they're going to be linked below in our episode description and that is Geist Podcast. So now that we got the announcements out of the way today's episode is going to be a scary stories episode. So this used to happen to me when I was in high school. Every time I came back from school, I had really late hour classes here in Mexico. I had to walk right next to the local Panteon. In Mexico, a Panteon is a cemetery for really humble people. They have usually only dirt with no grass or trees. The graves have only wooden crosses and they are really small. The typical Dia de los Muertos kind of cemetery in the movies. To get home, I would have to walk beside it at around 10pm. It was a long walk with only some streetlights showing me the way. It all started with one light going off behind me one time. I thought it was odd that it went out when I passed by, but I didn't think it was that much strange. After all, It isn't uncommon in Mexico to have blackouts from time to time, even if it was only one light. I thought nothing of it. The next night it happened again, except this time, it wasn't only one light. It was all the lights. Not at the same time, no. They were turning off right behind me as I was walking by them, like something behind me was making it happen. This happened every night when I came back from school, getting progressively more scary as I started hearing voices coming from behind me whispers, steps. This was weird because it was 2009. During this time, crime was really common in my town, and there was a big economic depression in Mexico. There was lots of robbers and dangerous people in the streets, so people would get home early and lock the door, and as a result, it was rare to see people outside after 9. So my walk back home was pretty desolate. Or so I thought, when I started to see shadows out of the corner of my eye when the lights started going out. After two weeks of the same thing, I was pretty much done dealing with it alone, so I told my mom. She didn't believe me, of course, 
and my close friends from school. They, of course, were skeptical and even laughed about it, thinking I was just scared of walking by the Panteon alone and wanted them to join me. Since we all lived in the same area, they agreed to come with me once we finished the day. When we were on our way back, I thought maybe it wasn't going to happen, since at one time I walked on the same street on my way home with a relative and nothing happened. So I was really shocked when the lights started going out as we all walked by, followed by sounds of whispers and footsteps. Easy to say, they were shitting their pants. Not even kidding. Once we finally got back to my place, they were scared of going back home alone. So I went and walked them home. It wasn't very far away and of course we totally skipped the Pantheon Street. When I dropped my last friend off at his house and started walking towards mine, I noticed it was almost 12 a.m. That's really late and dangerous for a high schooler living in Mexico. So I started walking promptly to my place. It was silent, a little dark, and then I heard whispers and footsteps. I thought, no, 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 no. I'm not even close to that place. Then I walked in front of a house with a big mirror in the doorway. It had a big fence with a big mirror behind it. That's when I saw my reflection, and it wasn't alone. There was something else behind me, like a man standing 10 feet away from me, looking at my back. That's when I did it. I started running and crying back home. I got home and started crying to my mom, telling her between sobs what happened. She was shocked and a little in disbelief. Then I told her to ask my cousin. My cousin told her what happened, and then I think she started to believe me a little. Not fully, though. I think she thought we were playing a prank on her or something. And after that, the same thing with the lights kept happening for a long, long time, with the noises getting more loud and close until something or someone helped me with it. I'm still really grateful for this person for helping me all these years ago, even if we don't talk anymore. Now I'm a 26-year-old college graduate with a good job that I love. I go swimming two days per week as a way of losing some weight. The problem is, it's all happening again. It's starting gradually, but it's the same. I can feel it. I feel the same sensations, the same fear. The problem is, it's not happening close to the Pantheon anymore. It's on another path that I have to use to get back from the swimming lessons. I need help. I recently traveled to Japan and was unbelievably excited as I've never really left home. I traveled from Tokyo to Osaka on the Shinkansen, I think that's right, the bullet train. And I told my girlfriend that I had literally never felt safer. You could walk around at literally any time of night and feel like it was at 2 in the afternoon. I don't live in a dangerous area here at home, but would still never be walking around in the middle of the night by myself. So when we got to Osaka, it was late, and we decided to check in to the new hotel and then walk around this park by the river. Everything was fine and normal until my girlfriend went into a public restroom. When I walked a bit past the restroom to sit on a bench, I started hearing these awful, guttural noises. I don't know what I'd imagine a raptor sobbing would sound like, but that was it. Simultaneously, I heard what I swear to God was bone crunching. There is absolutely no other way to describe the noise. It sounded like a gator crunching down on a deer. It was unnerving enough for me to turn around. And I swear to you, I witnessed what had to have been some kind of crime behind me. There were trees, but this thing was in front of them, not even in them. This person was literally dripping head to toe in some sort of viscous liquid. And I mean head to toe. Its limbs were contorted like they were broken and it was hunched over a body, or an animal, or something, and I swear it was eating it. I'm telling you, it looked like a human. It was 3am, but this was a touristy park. It wasn't even that hidden. I froze, and it was dark, but I know it looked at me, and it moved its neck so fast like a snap, and then he or she or whatever it was smiled at me. 
I sprinted into the woman's restroom, grabbed my girlfriend, pulled her out, and ran. Didn't look back, nothing. I told people at a convenience store nearby. And maybe it was a language barrier. I have no idea. But basically, no response. But I told a nearby security or cop. I generally couldn't tell. And brought them over there. And nothing. The person was just gone. I have nobody to talk to about this. Everyone keeps telling me it was wildlife. But I know what I saw. That was not wildlife. Nothing moves like that. It was literally dripping. Someone for the love of God tell me what animal that could have possibly been. I left Osaka but I am tempted to go back just to check the area again. I'm terrified but also don't want to spend the rest of my life worried I'm crazy or terrified of something. What do I do? Does anybody have any legitimate black-eyed children encounters? I keep seeing a lot of people saying they're not real. While I'm not one to say that they are or aren't, I happen to have a real story. One night, when I was a junior or senior in high school, one of my best friends and I, we'll call him T, decided to do what every other high schooler did and get stoned. Him and I were active stoners, so sneaking around at night and walking around his town. Now I'm not sure that it has any connection, but the town is fairly old with a semi-bad history as it used to be a coal mining town. Anywho, we were just taking a stroll. I would say it's probably about midnight and we had just passed all the active districts of the town and we were now going down a road that led to a park. As him and I are approaching, we were just talking, being rowdy, and as we came under the one and only street light that didn't actually light up anything past 10 feet away, T stops. Of course, knowing him and having other dangerous stories where bad shit had happened to us, this is what he does. He just starts kind of looking straight ahead of where we were walking and says, What the hell? Do you see that? And to be honest, I didn't. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary and I hadn't heard anything either. T starts scrambling for his phone to turn on the flashlight and I won't forget what we saw. There were three kids playing on the playset directly in front of us and when the lights shined on them, they weren't moving, and you couldn't see their eyes. T said something along the lines of, Oh Jesus, you guys scared us, but got no reply. They just sat and stared, and T and I just kind of started backing up and said goodbye. We didn't hear them leave either. It was just dead silence the entire time, and it never occurred to me until after we had gotten back to his house that it was 1am, and these kids couldn't have been older than elementary school. I won't ever forget that night. So this happened about six to seven years ago, when I got an Alexa for Christmas that year. My parents are old school and my dad was strictly against having the Alexa even taken out of the box. It took months of begging and pleading before I could set it up, with conditions of course. I had to be in my room only, nowhere else in the house, just my room. When I was not speaking to it or using it, it was either on mute or unplugged. Do not talk personal matters around it. So like family matters, password, addresses were not to be said around the Alexa, even if it was muted. So with those rules and probably a few more, I got to set up my Alexa. I had discovered a while after having it that you could play some guessing games on it. Being an only child at home and bored 99% of the time, I used this feature a lot, like honestly almost too much. One night while I was playing some guessing games and playing a game on my iPad, I had gotten a question wrong. I don't remember the question or what I answered, I only remember what Alexa said. It was something the lines of, Wrong! Now listen close! 
Obviously, this catches my attention, and I stop what I'm doing and look at my Alexa. Right on cue, she continues in this horrifying, whisper, raspy voice. Don't look behind you. Needless to say, I unplugged my Alexa and refused to use it for months slash years after that. I apologize for this long post, but it's background for what occurred last night. Prior to April this year, I used to see a shadow person at my work watching me in my office. I blew it off as me being tired from taking care of my newborn. Then I started seeing the shadow person in my dreams with bright white eyes slowly walking towards me and I would wake up to my wife staring at me asking if I was okay. I am a skeptic of supernatural and a Catholic man, so I just blew it off as being sleep deprived and on Minecraft too much, seeing Enderman. Then my wife and I moved into a new house in April, and stranger things started happening. We were here with our child, and the first night we slept here, our ring caught what my wife thought was a spirit walking in from the backyard into the door. She woke me up to show me, and at the time, I waved it off as a spider web, even though it doesn't explain the second of it appearing and disappearing. About a month later, my wife was asleep in the living room while I slept in our bedroom since it was my night to take care of our baby. While she slept downstairs, she heard her cats going crazy, like intense running across everything, and she woke up to seeing a bright orb with legs running with the cats as they were running around it. My wife yelled for it to go away, and the cat stopped running and lay next to her while the supposed spirit disappeared. I woke up and texted her if she was okay since I heard a yell. She came upstairs wide-eyed and explained everything. A month goes by, and the next incident happens. My best friend, his wife, and their one-year-old spent the night in our living room since they were visiting for the week, but due to their B&B not being ready, they stayed with us for the night. In the middle of the night, my best friend's wife got up hearing their child making noises. When she looked, she saw their child standing in her playpen and also saw their child on the top of the cat tree looking at her. She put the child back to sleep in the playpen and looked at the cat tree to only see the child standing in a crouched position watching with the tilted head. She ignored it and went back to bed. In the morning she asked if we ever seen anything unusual and that's where we mentioned what was happening to us so far since we now know we weren't just seeing shit. Moving into August, things became interesting at our house. We both work hybrid work schedules, and while I was working from home, I heard my wife talking from our bathroom, and it hit me. She was in the office, not home. I grabbed my handgun from my dresser before entering our master bedroom where the voice was coming from. I aimed my gun and barged into the bathroom, sweeping across quickly only to see my wife's closet door slam shut. I yelled, whoever is here, come out with your hands up. No response, other than sounds of mumbling coming from her closet. I kept my gun trained on the closet door. As I walked closer, I yelled again. Whoever is here, leave now. The mumbling stopped, and the closet light turned on. I stood, gun still drawn, and opened the door to only be greeted with nothing, not even the cats. I sighed, and thought I was just tired, and saw shit from being up with our infant. I called my wife, and she said maybe I was just tired, but she was also scared. That night, I would be greeted with what we dubbed the Mimic, as our more spiritual friends call it. My wife moved downstairs in the middle of the night from our bed due to me snoring, and while she was sleeping on the couch, our baby woke up and needed her pacifier. When I woke up, I noticed my wife was gone, but standing at the door with her arms crossed with a pissed look. I asked her, What's up? Why are you mad? I'm getting up. What I thought was her walked out of the room into the hallway. I got up to follow her, to only not see her by the child's door, nor walking downstairs. I ran to the stairs, to only see her on the couch, wrapped in blankets, not looking like she had been stirred. I walked back up to soothe their baby, and once she was back to sleep, I went back to my wife. I woke her up, and asked her why she was mad, 
and she looked at me in confusion. She said she never went upstairs and never heard our child. I explained to her what I saw, and our faces both turned white. I'm a very skeptical person of the paranormal and a Catholic man, but this made me actually afraid that we were possibly being haunted. After that, we researched this entity and asked around to our friends, and it was concluded that it was a mimic, and we were to ignore it so it would go away. So since August, we have stopped talking about it and ignored everything. We had pretty much forgotten about it until last night. I had an intense nightmare of a black entity with an equilateral, triangular face with the point facing down so it would be an upside down triangle. The sides of the triangle would tighten in like half of a pie with black, glossy eyes that I could see my face in matte black leather facial skin. Following the three nightmares that occurred last night, I am terrified beyond belief. Please provide any advice or information that I can get to get rid of this nightmare or what I'm seeing. This isn't anything like Annabelle, and it might be a bit anticlimactic, but bear with me. My grandmother was wicked and could hear, see, and sense things, and that was passed down to me and one of my cousins. I've seen, heard, and experienced a lot of things, but nothing really bad until my mom had gotten a little doll from Africa that she kept on the top of her entertainment center. I had bad vibes about that doll from day one, and I told my mom a few times that she should get rid of it. Being the extreme realist she is, she always said it was just a doll. She liked it, and it was directly from Africa, and was staying where it was. It was initially just a sense of unease, but that feeling grew stronger to where you could feel the hate and malevolence this doll was giving out. It came to a head one evening when I was over visiting. This doll sat in the center of the unit, looking out over the living room. My mom was at the far end of the living room and I was in the kitchen getting a drink when she went silent in the middle of a sentence. I came back in to see her standing and staring at the doll. It was no longer in the center, but was now at the edge and had turned 90 degrees and appeared to be staring at my mom with such fierce hatred that even my mom could feel it. She got as far as, what? When the doll fell off the entertainment unit and onto the floor. My mom let out a small shriek while I grabbed a sheet and threw it over the doll and called my grandma to let her know what had happened. She said she'd be right over and to wait outside until she got there. Even getting to that front door was a challenge as this thing was draining the energy in the room and we were getting weaker until we got outside where things were a little better. My grandma got there in about 10 minutes and I followed her into the house. It was kind of funny as my grandmother was a 4'11 sweet little English lady with a sweet disposition and never had a bad word about anyone. She walked into the living room and with a strong voice, I've never heard from her before. All right, that's enough. She walked over, lifted up the sheet, grabbed the doll and put it into a small beige bag she was carrying with her. She walked over to my mom and reverting back to the sweet little old English lady. Don't worry, dear. I'll cleanse the doll and you won't have to worry anymore. Then she got back in her van and drove off. My mom was still a little freaked out and spent the night at my place as there was no way she was staying at her house that night. I went to my grandparents' house about a week later. My grandma went up to the attic and came down with the doll. My mom shrank back, but my grandma handed the doll to me. I took it and felt absolutely nothing. Whatever she had done to the doll worked. My mom tentatively took it and relaxed. It's back at my mom's house now, but not on the entertainment center. It's on a bookshelf in a well-lit corner of the living room. A few years ago, I was a university student in Eastern Washington, but dating a girl in Western Washington. I was visiting her for the weekend during the summer 
when we got into a huge fight around midnight and I left, deciding to head back to my apartment. I mention this for context as to why I'm driving through Snoqualmie Pass after 1 in the morning. I'd never gone through the pass so late before, and what is usually a very busy stretch of freeway on I-90 was completely empty. I went well over an hour without seeing a single vehicle going either way, so naturally, I was driving way too fast. At the time, I had a 73 Chevy Nova. It wasn't quite the classic, but it had power and complete lack of AC. Even though it was late at night, the combination of a warm summer night and the large amount of heat that bleeds through the engine meant that I had my windows down and was sweating. Not far into the east side of the mountains, around 1.30, I had a long stretch of road that doesn't have an on-ramp or any way to get into the freeway, when suddenly, a set of headlights appeared behind me something like 200 feet back. I glanced back at the lights puzzled as to where the vehicle could have possibly come from. I noticed that despite the fact that I was absolutely hauling, the lights were gaining on me. I decided to switch lanes and slow down a bit so it could pass. After a moment, the vehicle now only half that distance moved over behind me into the same lane. This is when I begin to panic. I'm in the middle of nowhere, hadn't seen another vehicle in over an hour, and now I've got some aggressive driver running up on me. I watched as those lights got closer, 60 feet, 50 feet, 40 feet. In seconds, it was upon me. I braced against the steering wheel expecting to get rear-ended by a vehicle going much faster than me. I watched in my rearview mirror in horror as those headlights blasted right into the back of my vehicle and suddenly, everything froze. Quite literally. Nothing physically hit me, but the whole vehicle frosted over and I could see my breath. I hit the brakes and did my best to pull over despite not being able to see through the windshield. Every hair on my body was standing on end. I got out of my vehicle and paced back and forth, examining my car which was already starting to defrost as streams of water poured down it. There was no damage to my back bumper, and absolutely no sign of whatever vehicle had hit me. Eventually I calmed down enough to get back in the car and drive the rest of the way back, wake my roommates and explain what had just happened. The next time I drove through the area in the daylight, right about where I think the ghost car had hit me, there was a very old wooden cross, somewhat overgrown, on the side of the road. So my name is Max. I'm currently 15 and this story happened to me at the age of 11 or 12. I can't remember the age too clearly. My friends and I love to explore and any chance we can explore, we go do it. Here are the characters in my story. Max, Bren, a close friend, Nick, a best friend that's always explored with me, and the vanishing girl, the antagonist of the story. I wasn't actually at my house this time of the story. I was at my best friend's house, and we were extremely excited to explore a creek near his place. We have explored this place multiple times, and every time we had found something new. Nick and I explored this place a lot with a few other friends, but only one could tag along for this trip. This friend's name was Bren, and he was a chill kid. Bren was the oldest in the group, being about 14 at the time, and he was kind of like the leader, even though none of us listened to him. We tried to get more people to join us, but after other experiences at the creek, they were too creeped out to join us. We all got out gear, a few snacks and a pocket knife or two, and readied ourselves for the adventure waiting ahead. The walk was about a quarter of a mile, and was really easy for our energetic child minds, so we cleared that walk really easily. There is a pretty long path of woods to get down to the actual creek, and it's really awesome to walk in the sunlight as long as you don't hit any spiders. After about an hour, we approached the entrance of the creek. This creek is also a national park, so we could walk it without worry of trespassing. Like that stops us anyway. We entered the creek's side where there was a staircase waiting for us to go down. We wandered down the staircase, doing what every kid does, skipping a few steps. I end up falling because of the jumping, and we all have a good laugh. 
all of us reached the bottom and splashed around in the cold creek water. It was amazing. After about 20 minutes of splashing and just messing around, my best friend Nick tells us he knows a cool area. Of course, being kids, we all followed him. And Nick wasn't incorrect. It was a beautiful area. I had a bunch of crawl daddies and a pretty deep area that us short kids could swim in. We spent at least two hours enjoying the great area and hanging out having fun. Eventually, the sun dips down below the horizon and we head to go home. Nick's mom doesn't let us stay out late. We adventure to the staircase somewhat scurrying up the stairs, about a hundred steps. The group got to the trail that takes us to the street. We leave and get into the street, and then I turn around to see a woman. This woman has never been seen before from anyone in the group. She has a knife in hand, and she's about middle-aged, with a nightgown on. She was about 200 yards away from us, and I was worried. I tell my friends, and they turn around, and in some cliche horror movie scene, she is gone. The group believes me. We all run home. A bunch of little kids running from a ghost. Or was it? So the last bit of The Vanishing Girl I decided to not tell, because I didn't have time to type it out. Now I will continue the story. So after we saw the girl at the creek, my friends and I ran home. A white van kept following us, and then the headlights would vanish and we would turn back. It was some truly creepy shit. It took us forever to get home because we kept taking back roads to try and hide from the ghost car. After everyone got home, we sat down and talked about the day. It was only Nick and I in the house, and Vern had to go to his own house. After a while, Nick and I go to sleep. But little did I know, Nick fell asleep with a story to tell. As we got up and wandered back outside to meet with Bren, we were surprised to see Bren was already at our front door. We asked him what happened and he spoke. Something was outside my window and wouldn't stop knocking and scratching at it, trying to get in. We were all thoroughly freaked out and we believed him. The belief faded after we looked at his window to see no visible marking. Although we didn't see any markings, I still believed him because of the utter fear you could see on his face. After about an hour, we all sat down to speak about what happened the night earlier. Nick and Bren both knew what I saw, but they didn't tell me till later. They spoke to me about how they saw a little girl that looked just like the one I described in the first part of the story get hit by the white van. Kind of creepy, I know, but it gets worse. After the girl gets hit, the entire scene vanished in front of their eyes. What? How? I asked. No one to this day believes what we saw but I don't need people to. The group knows what we saw, and we were constantly searching for the girl to get our questions answered. There's a fast food restaurant which was built right next to a cemetery in my hometown. It is notoriously haunted. It was even featured in a national Latino show called Ocurrió Así. I guess similar to Extra or some show like that in the States. Night cams showed pans, spatulas, cups, and other things being thrown around. The fast food restaurant also had an indoor playground where the EVPs had caught children's voices and laughter. Employees and some customers claimed to have seen children dressed in outdated clothing some almost see-through. I no longer live in that town, but I made a pit stop to use the restroom because it's on my way to my new home now. In the restaurant, there are two stalls, the larger one for people with physical disabilities and one smaller one. When I walked in, I could hear someone in the larger stall. The sounds were like any other when you would walk into a two-stall public restroom. I could hear shuffling of the feet and clothes, clearing of the throat, etc., when I finished, I walked out to wash my hands and noticed that the person hadn't come out yet, but I didn't think anything of it. As I was facing the mirror, I saw the stall door open and then close, but no one came out. I dismissed this as maybe this person still needed to go or perhaps had forgotten something, but about 30 seconds passed and still, nothing. Perplexed and confused, 
I was about to walk out when something told me to go back inside and check if there was someone indeed in the bigger stall. I slowly and carefully looked under the stall, and the stall was empty. I hadn't even thought or remembered that the fast food restaurant was supposedly haunted, so I didn't go in there with the expectation of something weird happening. What really piqued my interest was the fact that I could feel the presence of someone in the stall next to me, as it was making sounds and noises. But what really got me was when I saw the stall door open and close. When I was about five or six years old, my sisters and I used to share a room. Most nights, my older sister and I would see two distinct figures. She would see a lady in white standing in the doorway, directly in front of my bed. I would see a man with red eyes, or at least I thought it was a man, as all I could see were red eyes. Though my sister could see the lady, she said she never spoke to her. She just stood there, getting closer every night while I, on the other hand, would see a pair of bright red eyes staring at me from the closet. A disembodied, masculine voice would whisper, Treasure, come to the closet and play. Over and over. Sometimes my older sister and I would jump in each other's bed and hide under the blankets until morning. This was going on for months until my dad decided to get the house blessed again. We never saw them after that. I'm 24 now. My wife and I recently had a baby, and I've been having weird dreams recently. They would always start with me standing in my son's room, staring at the closet, and a familiar set of red eyes would stare back at me. My most recent dream, he actually spoke. His voice a lot deeper and booming than I remember. You didn't come play with me, but your son may be the one to play. He said that before I woke up. I called my dad and told him about the whole thing. He told me he remembers me telling him about the man years before. But then, just then, he went silent for about five minutes. When he spoke again, he recounted seeing the same figure as a child. He also told me he remembered having the same dream after I was born. I've blessed my house twice already, but I can only protect my son so much. I just hope, I really, really hope, that he doesn't go play in the closet. I may never see him again. Sorry for such a long story. I had to cover about two weeks worth of activity. I need some help identifying whatever the hell is here with me. I just got back from a week-long vacation last night and the same activity from the house I was staying in is going on in my apartment. I apologize in advance for any incoherence in what I say because I haven't gotten much sleep in the last week. The house we stayed in was gorgeous and since my entire extended family was staying there, it was absolutely massive. It was split into two parts, the old side of the house, roughly just a basement studio and three bedrooms upstairs, and the newer side. I'm not going into too much detail about the newer side as no paranormal activity took place there, but it was a gorgeous house. I shared a room with my girlfriend, and since we were the last to arrive, we got the worst room in the house. Not only did we get the smallest room in the house, it was also on the old side of the house directly in front of the basement stairs. As I had been driving for six hours that day, I was pretty tired, so I said hello to everyone and quickly got into bed to go to sleep. It was around 11 p.m. when my girlfriend and I got into bed. She's lucky in the sense that she can fall asleep just about anywhere in five minutes, so she was asleep within seconds. I had a weird, uneasy feeling in my chest. Not necessarily a scary feeling, just that annoying alert feeling you get when you feel like something is watching you. 
To help ease myself, I hopped right down into a YouTube rabbit hole. About an hour into my journey, I could tell that my girlfriend was having a nightmare, so I put my hand on her arm to gently wake her up. But as soon as I touched her, she bolted awake screaming, mumbling, the ghost, and immediately went back to sleep. I had just started to get tired, and safe to say, I was sufficiently creeped out at this point. About two hours went by when my girlfriend woke up screaming again, saying, the footsteps are close, and passed out immediately. I decided I'm not going to sleep that night and went right back to YouTube. Another hour passes by, and I see my girlfriend sit up in the bed, but she was still asleep. She moved so she was sitting on the edge of the bed and started having a conversation with the corner of the room. She eventually laid back down, but not before I was absolutely terrified. Activity died down after the first night, usually just creaks in the floor or knocks on the wall slash door. The only other standout event besides movement around the room happened on the second to last night when something sat down on the edge of my bed. My first thought was that my cat jumped on the bed, but I remembered I wasn't at my apartment and sat up just in time to see the indentation lift up off the edge of the bed. It couldn't have been my girlfriend as she was on the opposite side of the bed and nowhere near where the indentation happened. Also, the bed I was staying in was as firm as a rock, so it was challenging to push that far down into it. Fast forward one more sleepless night and I'm on my way home. After a long day of driving, I got back and settled down with some Netflix. My girlfriend had plans to go hang out with her friends, so she was out for most of the night. I thought I'd finally get a break from the spooky stuff when my dog and cat both started tracking something around my apartment. The way their heads were moving, whatever they saw was moving fast. Now I've seen them track bugs before, but neither of them really focus on it too much. They usually just huff and ignore it, but this was different. Poppy, my dog, started growling when whatever it was moved into the corner of the room. My cat Anna jumped up right next to me on the couch while Poppy growled at the corner and started to slowly back up towards me. After a full week of crap like this, I wasn't even scared anymore. Just pissed off and tired because it keeps me from falling asleep. Poppy and Anna both track the thing moving out of the corner towards us so she starts barking like crazy. After I get her to stop barking, I heard a growl come from the center of the room. It was pretty high pitched, like a small dog or a girl. Judging by where my pets were tracking, it looked like it was very short, very fast, and could jump up on the table and counters. I stood up, stared in its general direction, and said, Please leave. I got a huge wave of chills and got goosebumps in places I didn't know I could get goosebumps. But I said it again, much louder and more certain this time while opening my front door to let it out. Whatever it was got really upset. It didn't do anything, but I could feel a lot of anger. My pets tracked it moving towards the door, so I thought I was in the clear. About two minutes later, my dog started barking at the corner of the room where the door is, while my cat is on full alert staring at the same place. At this point, I just give up and hope it just leaves me alone since it hadn't been violent yet, just annoying. Poppy eventually fell asleep at my feet, and Anna had run into the other room, occasionally poking her head out of the door to look in and immediately spring back into the room. I just gave up on dealing with it at this point. I put my earbuds in to block out the knocks on the walls and watch some YouTube. I decided to stay up until my girlfriend got back to let her know what was happening, but whatever it was, took this as an opportunity to mess with me. I was laying on my couch and kept feeling something poking me every five minutes. Not hard, just constant pokes on my arms and legs and feet. After this went on for a while, it pulled on my nostrils. Again, I just ignored it, because I learned it just gets worse if I engage with it. Whenever something like this would happen, I could feel the apartment get much colder. After hours of knocking, poking, pulling, and the occasional arm brush, my girlfriend finally got home. The second she got through the door, I could tell whatever it was left as I had no uneasy feeling and there was no more weird noises. So I had one of the most restful nights I've had in over a week. I don't know if it's gone for good or if it will be back tonight, but I will post an update tomorrow if anything happens. Any help on this would be greatly appreciated, as I don't know how to handle it. Other than the growl and the short but overwhelming sense of anger, it hasn't been violent or disturbing, just really annoying. 
Any help on how to identify or safely communicate with it would be greatly appreciated. Does anyone have any hauntings or unexplained stories while growing up living or even visiting the West Indies? These are short versions of my experiences, and this is by no means an exhaustive list. I lived by a crossroads. I remember seeing a shadow creature standing in the track across the road. I stared at it for a while to make sure that that was really what I was seeing. When it started to beckon to me, I noped and went inside. I dreamt of it that night. I told my mom, who said she had also dreamt something trying to get me. She handled it. There was a colonial building in my school compound. I used to get there very early, say between 6 and 6.15. In Form 1, I saw a woman in an old-fashioned nurse's uniform, standing on the steps. I looked away, looked back, and she was gone. The same building, later that year, I had to go in there for whatever reasons. I entered around 11.15. I know this because I had to keep track of time to not miss the next period. I entered through the bottom side door and not through the front entrance. The building was completely different, and when I turned to leave, I couldn't find the door I had entered from. I walked around the building. It was different, newer, more old-fashioned, I spent what felt like an hour just looking for one of the people who should have been there, trying to leave but only coming into rooms that I knew should have been empty, but were filled with furniture, etc. I eventually found myself into a kitchen type area and just started to panic because I thought I had come back to the room I had started off in, but nope. I heard humming, and looking outside the window, I saw a shadow. I turned and the shadow was now in the kitchen as a woman dressed in old fashioned clothes. She was very kind and asked me if I was one of the girls and got lost. I told her yes. She smiled and pointed to the right and told me to run along through there and not to be late for class. I looked and didn't see a door, but rather a curtain, and said okay, and I thanked her and walked through the curtain. I found myself outside of the building, facing it once again. I checked my watch. It was 11.17. I noped the fuck out of there. It took maybe a year before I ever went back into that building by myself. There was a day in Form 4 when things were, let me just say, very bad mentally for me. My parents were pretty relaxed about me saying I needed a day off from school for whatever reason, and I had already okayed it with them to stay home that day. I guess that was not a good idea. I was in my bedroom while they were downstairs preparing to leave. A full physical man in red pants and a yellow top walked into my bedroom and very calmly and warmly told me to go to school. Nothing mattered. Just go to school. I was not scared or anything. I just agreed. I called out to my parents that never mind. I threw on my uniform and went to go with them. I told myself it didn't matter. I would have two-ish hours after school anyways. I got home around 2.45ish and saw the man again, telling me to just stay downstairs. I did. I just dropped my book bag by the door and sat in the armchair right there. My parents got home not five minutes later. Well, my dad dropped my mom off and went back to work. The man watched me and told me it would be fine now, and that I'd see him again the next time I needed him, and he disappeared. My mom entered the house, looked at me, and asked what was wrong. Years later, I found out that that same man had appeared to her at work roughly an hour before and told her she needed to go home. And go home now. Back then, there was no way for her to call my dad to get her, so she just asked a colleague to drop her off to the main road and she would travel home from there. My dad passed on the road not 30 seconds after she had gotten on the road. Told her he just had a feeling he should just take a break from work and take a little drive and absentmindedly came that way. Turns out that this man is not a stranger. My mom has been seeing him off and on since she got our house. 
My mom has always been spiritual and from birth has been seeing things, which is why she wasn't afraid when in the first few weeks she realized she was sharing a house with this man. She realized he was harmless, so he left him be, and eventually realized he only showed himself to her for reasons. When my dad first came into the picture, he approved and told her she'd see less of him now that he was sure she was okay. But she's seen him off and on throughout the years. My dad knew of him and vaguely heard him at times, but met him one day. I was a toddler playing in the living room with the sliding doors open. My mom was in the back washing clothes. My dad was back and forth. He was in the kitchen when he said this man in red pants and a yellow top ran into the kitchen, yelling at him to get me now. He couldn't distract it anymore. My dad didn't even question it, ran out to the kitchen and saw a big snake butting its head into the glass door, but only a few inches away from where it would clear the glass and enter the room where I was playing. He got me and dispatched the snake. The man stayed and afterwards told my mom that he didn't think she or my dad would see him again for a while, but that he's always around. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed those scary stories. You all just heard a comment by a deleted user. The mimic that won't leave by user history guy underscore 253. The I 90 ghost by user the key of C flat. Fast food restaurant ghost by user Miss IVG 13. I think something followed me home from vacation by a deleted user. I have no clue where to post this, but I do not know what to do. By user fossilhead 33. Creepy Alexa Experience by user Mystical Cheese Balls. Cursed Doll by C Norm 77. The Vanishing Girl Part 1 and Part 2 from user Max from YouTube. Red Eyes from Single Perception 660. And finally, a comment from user Churichi. Once again, I hope you guys enjoyed all of those stories. It's always nice to do these sort of like scary story episodes because, I mean, it really kind of shows you that there there's no way that you can cover everything, right? Like, I don't see us ever running out of content for this podcast because it just seems like the paranormal is like everlasting. Like, it's literally endless. Like, some of these stories I thought were like insane. Like, the one that you just told about this like red this red figure this red man like that was like really weird and sort of seemed like a a guardian angel in some sense yeah like i really found that story just crazy to me because like everyone in that person's family saw the man in like the red pants and then the yellow shirt and that was just so crazy that they each just kind of like knew he was there like living in the house with them but that he wasn't like an evil presence or anything he was truly there just to protect them this is the thing about paranormal. We say this like almost, you know, almost every episode, but it always gets a bad rap. I feel you know it's always something like you think scary or horror or you know paranormal, and you automatically associate it with like something negative. And it doesn't always have to be that way. But I mean, these stories are like a variety of everything. And yeah, I mean, which one was your favorite? Mine definitely has to be. I feel like the red eyes one that I told. That one really got to me because. I've heard different stories and like just different legends, I guess, about red eyes. And the fact that he that the user like ends up telling that his father also saw the same red eyes when he was younger, like dreamt about it when he was born. And here he is with a son now. And the user is having the same dream that his father had. And he's just hoping his son can battle it through or something. The stories when it has like these spirits like interacting with people i feel like they're the ones that like are the scariest and so for it to kind of like talk and like say something to you or like entice you in some way or like taunt you like it's always scary i think the story that i told about like this mimic that's just like harassing this guy who he is not a believer right he says he's a skeptic he's a catholic you know a a religious man and how it's just like bothering him and messing with him sort of like taking this persona or like pretending to be his wife in a way and using like 
this kid against him and all that it's it's scary when something messes with you and you have no way of like fighting back you know there's this something that like if this was like a human or something you kind of have a sense of security in, a, in like a weird way i guess a strange way or like you can take them on right you feel like you could take on an intruder or something but when it's something that you don't know what it is or you can't see it just seems like much much worse because you have no way of fighting back or you know getting rid of it i'd love to hear from our listeners and you know you guys let us know what you guys think about these stories which ones stood out to you the most and if you have any other stories be sure to share that with us and as you guys know before we end off every episode we always end with a tiktok and this week we have another tiktok that samantha shared with me and this one is very strange i will say i think it's in theme with like our scary stories that we've told so far and this one it's like this guy he's like catching this thing on camera he calls it this black mass and it's sort of taunting him right it's just like how we were talking about a second ago with these spirits messing with you and it's sort of like opening this i would assume like the basement door or the door that leads down to the basement And you can see this mass towards the end of the video sort of like appearing at like the 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 last step before going into that guest like the actual house. And he's like repeatedly closing the door, walks away, and then it gets opened again. And it's just over and over and over again. And I don't know what I would do in this situation. I mean, I don't know about you, Samantha. Like, tell me, what are you doing? I am leaving, selling the house, doing anything to get outside or away from this black mass, this shadow figure that is messing with me. I would do anything in my power to just leave. No, and I don't think that's like, I don't think that's like overdoing it either. You know, I think that's completely valid. I always find it like sort of sad when people are just like tormented by a spirit or an entity, but so much where they get used to it, you know? And I don't think there's anything wrong with, I guess, like a friendly spirit. But when it's like these malevolent and just kind of like obnoxious spirits, there's just something about it where it's just like you will never know peace again if, you know, unless you like get rid of it. And I just think it's sad like to be able to be like, well, well, you know, I just got used to it. It definitely is. And I would never want to fall into any sort of house or just live any life where I get used to a spirit. (laughs) picking on me i guess yeah i mean i think i guess this would be a a quick little thing i could share with you guys and maybe like a quick little scary story i guess of my own but like when i moved out i experienced something and immediately i was like oh no like i always thought like what if one day when i get a house or something like is it going to be haunted i know i told you i experienced a couple of things since i moved over here and it is not like there's not things that kind of like are like unsettling or kind of have scared me it's more like i can't explain it i don't know what it was and it's just very like weird to think about because i know it there's no there's no one else here there's i know that like it wasn't me and because there isn't anyone else here there really is no explanation for what it could be like i had moments where i had youtube on the tv and you know i walk away from the living area where the remote's sitting on like my couch and then i'll glance over and the remote is like uh it like the screen actually i'm sorry kind of like gets toggled as if somebody was like looking for another video and that's never happened to me before on its own right it, usually you always have to kind of do it yourself other times where i experience like for whatever reason i just wake up in the middle of night and my eyes just immediately shoot over to one corner or I just get this feeling that something's there. I'm going to see this entity. But yeah, like I've just been experiencing some very strange things, not necessarily scary. So like, I guess I wouldn't pay it too much mind if this were to go on. But I don't ever want to get to that point, like you said, where this is just like an everyday occurrence. I definitely wouldn't either. Well, I hope you guys enjoy these stories. And again, happy Halloween from the Calabria podcast. And if you guys ever want to send in your own personal story or any sort of TikTok or headline, be sure to send that in our way at our email at calabriapod at gmail.com. 
And be sure to follow us on our Instagram and TikTok at Calabria Pod. And as always, if you guys want to support the show, be sure to leave us a rating and review on whatever podcasting app you are listening to us on. It always helps to support the channel and kind of get us out there for more people to enjoy. And again, welcome to all of our new listeners. I hope you guys enjoyed these two episodes. You guys are actually kind of getting like a little treat, right? Most people have been waiting for like about a, about like two months, but here we are, two episodes sort of back to back. And again, be sure to check out the guys podcast it is going to be a treat i promise you you will not regret it and if there's nothing else we'll catch you guys in the next one peace bye